everybody. Welcome back to AI Chatter, episode nine now. Uh, this week, we're going to chat with Ken about uh, his time at the NVIDIA conference. We've had a, a busy week of conferences and events, uh, but let's chat AI. All right, Ken, so you're you're all by yourself this week. Marty is uh, hitting the slopes, shredding that that gnar, as they say, <laughs> uh, a little break, and we made sure we, we let him take it. But uh, yeah. excited to have you on and, and chat a little bit about uh, the NVIDIA conference that you went to. We also just had the David for Breakfast uh, event as well with Snowflake in Boston. So we've had a, a busy week. <laughs> For yes, sure. despite despite my hat saying Florida, my my clo my clothes and my jacket says Boston. It is I don't know what you guys are doing here right now. I am held up in the in an Omnia across the street from where we had our event. Uh, there's a uh, video game convention going on next door, so there's all sorts of fun character character outfits, and I forgot mine. Uh, you know, back at home, so the odd one out. It looks like about it. You know, my my big stars Star Wars trooper hat. I'm going to show off my nerd. You know, the irony, right, is that so I come back from this Nvidia conference, and it used to be all about gaming, like the whole thing was gaming, right? That's the that was the original reason for these things. There wasn't a single mention of gaming at all, like. Yeah, they've Nothing. shifted so much. Like it, 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 the amount of enterprise is it is enterprise only, um, primarily uh, so uh, in a in a good split between computer visiony something and AI. So that was it's a major shift. It, it, it's uh it's it's quite remarkable. I I assume they have another conference that's more video gamey, but there was no really no discussion of it at all. Yeah, it's a crazy how quickly that shifted uh, I mean, you're talking a couple of years not even cut not yeah not even um you know again there was certainly a lot about processors so the uh so some things that i thought were interesting one uh jensen the ceo was clearly extremely nervous addressing the thirty thousand people that were in the sap center that said there were thirty thousand people in the sap center to watch basically a, a, a you know a, a tech hardware guy talk about his new stuff and yeah. so some of the new thing the highlight of the I'd say from the from the tech side was this chip called Blackwell well actually it's a collection of chips I don't even know what a GP type GPU is anymore because it's really like it's complicated you've got you've got the processors you've got the the memory on the thing and then you know they for old school type person like me that used to see towers, like, you know, you'd, we'd have towers in our dorm rooms, right? With, with the parts of a computer, you know, now these are like a VW bug size of a size of a car and they come on racks and inside these racks, you've got lots of GPUs and inside these racks, you've got uh, like radiators, you know, water, liquid cooled giant mega machines and, and and that's the, you know, the modern computer. Um, it's, it's wild. Yeah, is, I know they talked about with the Blackwell chip, the one of the lines that they feel like they said, I saw, saw somewhere at least it was like defying physics, the way that they built it or like all of, like, it's like, and I'm kind of like, well, is it then if they were able to do it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, they keep, they're, they're attempting to, but you, you know, you, you, it keeps slapping more horsepower into it, you know, and uh, it's kind of like with a with a vehicle. If you put enough horsepower into it, you're gonna you're gonna twist the twist the axle of the car, um, and and that's kind of what's what's going on. But you know, e each of these models, especially in the training process, requires you know uh, exponential amounts of horsepower in order to train these models. Um, Something else I didn't, ha I'm starting to have a greater appreciation for is the sheer size these models are, right? Like they're, they're, you know, when we say billions and trillions of parameters, we're talking about gigs of size of the model, you know, and it used to be where we would deploy a model and even a big model, like, 
that had 50, 80, 100 parameters. And, and you know, when you get into random forests and gradient boosted machines and stuff like that, it's it's bigger. It's big, you know, in the megabytes version of the world, but not not these mega mega enormous models. So um, even porting around models is now become is, is becoming difficult. Um, but uh, anyway, so Blackwell was the big big announcement, and some impressive sort of geeky numbers around that that you know are kind of are beyond me, um, yeah. as far as computes compute flop mega flops or petaflops or whatever the heck people talk about. Um, but uh, but the application side, like the number of innovative applications of of computer vision, of autonomous activities, and then certainly in our world, data science and analytics, um, that, that was front and center. So uh, the simulation process that are afforded by these new machines, you know, pretty much generated every bit of Jensen's talk. So uh, it's probably a sad day for the uh, designers that we used to design the, his presentations because it was all auto, it was all auto generated. And it was pretty fascinating, uh, pretty good, you know? Um, it's making, you know, I, I gave a lot of thought to this process. It's, it's making the expert even better. It's making a total novice, like, mm, marginally more dangerous, but the expert gets really good, right? Yeah. I, I, I talked to a developer of a tool uh, called the AI, NVIDIA AI Workbench, right? And the NVIDIA AI Workbench is a, um, a brand, new, brand new offering by NVIDIA, uh, uh, I'm very close to the project. It allows for easy portability from uh, workstations with GP with or without GPUs up into mega these mega machines with GPUs. So you know, think, develop locally and cheaply, push to uh, an environment that goes fast, right, in a cloud or something like that. You know, they were able to write the documentation in you know one one hundredth the amount of time because they use the LLM process to support that own, that that process. So. Uh, Coders are getting better. Uh, experts are getting better. Uh, when I generate this blog for what I learned, I'm going to use what I've learned and and how to prompt better. And we're going to get, I think, something that's, you know, certainly faster than what I would have done on my own. But yeah. you know, through my eyes, I see companies that are, kind of, there's some companies at that event that are more interesting than others. So. Um, that's what I, hopefully the blog is going to highlight and we're, we're going to talk about a couple of them right now. Love, yeah. I was going to say, well, what were some of the companies that you feel like people should go take a look at that you even yeah. met up or, or chatted with in the video? Yeah. So, so, so there was a, you know, a couple different themes. One of the big ones was get your data rag ready, right? So get your data, get your unstructured data into an environment, which is ready for, um, good prompts with the, with these gen AIs, right? Um, kind of like, kind of like the historical the message of, of of pretty much of Snowflake and of the other data warehouse companies is get you know get your data centralized one place. Historically, that's been structured data, and yeah. I'd say that the world is eh, mo some of the way there. Uh, I won't say all the way there. There's a lot left, uh, but the unstructured data world has historic has really just been in S3 buckets and 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 blobs, and and getting those data into a, a uh, unstructured, well, you know, when you put it in database, it becomes structured, but getting it into a, an environment which is useful for these rags, for these systems, uh, that was front and center. Uh, a number of developer tools, uh, one that I think deserves a, a, a special shout out is called Brev. Uh, I, really, I met those folks, I really liked their, uh, their messaging, they spin up um, GPU environments very quickly across any of the of the cloud providers. So basically, uh, they have great they have great technology to crank up machines quickly, um, better than the than, than the, you know the clouds can provision it themselves, uh, which is pretty slick. Um, I'm trying to think of oh, one that I really like, um, you know, slightly out of the thing that I normally spend my time in. Right, of course, like the data IQs and the Dominoes and the data robots are all there, and they have their own LLM story um but uh there's a solution called glean g-l-e-a-n huh. um and glean think of it as a well done sharepoint so a sharepoint that uh, doesn't kind I of want have, have crappy have crappy search capabilities so you know jam your teams your slack you know if you're a slack shop slack word docs google docs 
uh, your Workday, your Salesforce, your um, ERP system. Like, uh, give it access to all that stuff. And then you can ask questions like, what did my marketing team, what were the three marketing priorities in the last six months? And it uses uh, LLM capabilities, Gen AI capabilities with that unstructured data in a rag. So it basically is doing a lot of this for you. And then returning back a presentation, right? If you say build me, build it in a PowerPoint, it gives you three, you know, three slides highlighting what your uh, inventory looks like uh, over the next six months. It's, it's pretty slick. Um, yeah. Now it works, it works and it's, it's, they're not a tiny company. I think they're up to a few hundred people, um, but they seem to have good traction. Uh, I've heard good po positive customer reviews. So I like, I liked their story as well. Um, and then the aforementioned AI workbench. I think the AI workbench by NVIDIA um, as a methodology is going to be, uh, you know, picked up uh, kind of um, quietly by users, right? Because it's a is a piece of free software, but but by the sort of folks that are on their laptops, again, increasingly with GPUs that are banging away developing apps, it's a great solution. So yeah. uh, those are the three things that I think, uh, and there's a couple more. And you, you, uh, as you know, we probably should advertise more. Uh, get a hold of me. I'm happy to schedule 15, 20 minutes, talk about that experience, other things. Uh, a lot of cool BI tools that I think are, are coming out. Um, Happy to share those thoughts as well. Love it. Is um, just so somebody listening, if they didn't understand the difference, how would you describe the, the difference between structured data and unstructured data? Like, what what is the difference between that? Well, the structured data. Uh, I mean, the simple thing is like the numbers in rows and columns that you typically work in in an Excel environment, rows and columns, these things that are easily fit into rows and columns are structured data. Unstructured data, typically you'd find in uh, like a, a corpus, um, uh, word, a Word doc, right? And, and there are plenty of ways to structure that data, yeah. right? But you have to have a methodology to do it, right? You could represent it uh, a certain way inside of an Excel document. You could jam all the words into one cell. You could smush the, you could take the words and put them each in their own cells. You could chop them up into clumps. And so that's, that is the process of structuring unstructured data. Um, text and video and all this other, uh, 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 other images and that and audio, those are all kinds of versions of that. And so in the end, the computer needs a represent, a, a, a structured representation of data. Um, and, and so, but that's hard to do and maybe not always, the, depending on the way that you structure it, it becomes more or less useful. So when you say that they, a key focus of the NVIDIA conference seemed to be around getting all your unstructured data together, yes. are, are the lines between structured and unstructured, you feel like starting to become a little more blurred of like, it doesn't matter now with LLMs? Yeah, you know, what's interesting is I'd say that, um, uh, it does it not matter. Uh, yeah, that they're definitely becoming closer together. The app, the use and the applications are becoming closer together. The, the, the same folks that would be building AI on structured data are probably the same folks that are going to be building AI on unstructured data. And so inside of that same process to get data into the data warehouse, you have to have a governing body to get the data into a, un, an unstructured database environment, you know, whether it's a vector database, and there's a million different versions of those, um, or you use a service that does it, of which there were lots of those. Um, so. I remember seeing with uh, Snowflake, I believe it was with their snow park, and you can correct me if yeah. I'm wrong on this, but uh, it had like the... Um, the example they gave or the demonstration was the documents for repairing uh, of these manufacturing products. And basically they're fully written on by staffers saying like, oh, this product is okay, or this one failed, or this one needs further testing. And all these physical papers were being... Yeah. Oh, to. right. The document AI thing that they have. Yeah. Is that the same? Like that would be unstructured yeah. data that they're trying to use Snowpark to structure <clears throat> um, yes, and, and I would say that, that that's a good example of a almost fully cooked service yeah. where, you know, it, you, um, they provide you facility to, to both 
clean up your unstructured data, make it something structured, but in a very opinionated way. And then also a gen AI, you know, a, a, a model of some kind, right? And, and then also an opinion on how to use that unstructured database as a prompt for the model itself, right? So, so they're a document, I, I believe they're calling it document AI and I believe it's part of Cortex. A lot of this is marketing speak, which I, I don't really do a great job with, um, but, but, they're, but, but their document AI is a kind of one-stop shop to solve that problem, gotcha. right? And, and you know, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I saw a lot of the horizontal um, data science providers there, whether it was, again, Domino, Data IQ, Data Robot, a company called Clear ML, H2O was there. You know, all, you can kind of build versions of all these things in those horizontal tools, right? Mm -hmm. But to do big time production work, you know, beyond a prototype, you know, some of these specific companies, you know, they, they, they only they specialize in that like Glean, right? Like they're really damn good at, at that one enterprise search problem. And, and they're building a, uh, an opinion on the, the, how to use the model, the vector database that you put it into, the way to structure your prompt, all that stuff is, is what they're, they're adding value to. So, you know, it, it there's going to be a race just, just like there was a race, say with, um, Salesforce building Einstein capabilities versus like put your data all into Snowflake and build your own capabilities. There's going to be a version of that race that's going to happen. Um, you know, it's it's a make or buy decision around your LLMs, and some companies choose to internalize it, and some companies choose to to kind of buy, right? Makes sense. So, we'll, we'll definitely we'll see. But what's that? I was, we'll definitely add the the links to the ones that you kind of mentioned, uh, yeah, uh, and all them at the in the description if people want to take a look and definitely grab Ken uh, to to chat more about his experience at Nvidia. Well, one question I have for you on from Data for Breakfast, obviously in our events that we did, yeah. there are a trend you were seeing with conversations with uh, different companies on kind of questions maybe they were asking you around AI or. Uh, issues that they were seeing, like it was there a common trend that you were kind of seeing in your discussions? Well, you know, again, the curse of knowledge for a week, I was the fire, it was a fire hose of LLMs. And, and, and uh, the truth is that's not the only problem in the world. And <laughs> there were a lot of questions around, um, you know, sort of basics around uh, what sort of where does snowflake leave off, right? Like, why would I ever, why would, where are some of the places where Databricks maybe shines and, and Snowflake struggles a smidge and vice versa? Um, and then a lot of the BI tools, you know, I had, I had a conversation with um, a, a very mature company at, at, um, at the event and they were talking about a technology called Hex. Um, and so Hex is a notebooking tool. Um, I, I, it, it's neat. I don't want to in any way like besmirch it. Um, but it's pretty traditional in its in its short in its form, right? Um, uh, and, and you know, we forget sometimes that companies' needs can be, you know, you don't need to bazooka all the time um, to solve the problem, right? And so, so the companies that tend to use Hex find it much faster and collaborative to build um, uh, uh, dashboard-like tools uh, in a tool like that than, than to say build a fully worked out dashboard in a Tableau or a Power BI. So that's the reason why those those tools exist. And so um, I thought that was a kind of a nugget. Yeah. Is there uh, any uh, closing remarks for you on anything else that you want to add from NVIDIA or Data for Breakfast as, as we kind of wrap up? Mm, closing remarks. Um, well, I'm a little bit, you know, depressed this morning because my Kentucky Wildcats are no longer playing in the, um, in the tournament. So I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'm in a fit state, uh, you know, to give too many, too many big closing remarks. Um, and you know, any I closing wonder, remarks for Kentucky? <laughs> you know, I think it might be the end of the John Calipari time. I, I, I love him to death, but, and I know it's going to be a struggle, but I think it's time to move on.
you know. <laughs> these AAU kids, these AAU kids that are okay, you know, they, they play 15 games in a weekend. They lose four of them, and then, and then they win. Well, then, you know, it's a different animal when you're playing a one-and-done thing. So kind of maybe change it up a little bit. <laughs> so, anyway, no, from the, from the Snowflake... Yeah, the Snowflake and NVIDIA series, though. So, um, uh, you know, everyone at the NVIDIA conference was applying models, these Gen AI models, in different ways. And to watch a bunch of computer scientists that, you know, 15 years ago didn't care much about actually using data, you know, they just report on it to now using predictions, because that's what that is, is pretty remarkable, right? Mm. And, I, and I'd say also, sadly, computer scientists, if it was ever computer scientists versus statisticians, the computer scientists would have won this one. Like, it's, it's it, statisticians, I, I still like the way they think um, about data, but, but the computer scientists are using data um, in almost, almost similar ways. I, I don't know if they understand why they're doing it, right? Because that's not their background, right? Data is kind of exhaust, and, but, but they're using it in predictive ways. And so, you know, you go around the floor with 400 or so vendors and every single one has got predictive models in some part of their product, which is truly remarkable. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Other than that, I saw a couple autonomous dogs and uh, like an articulating hand, like a like a Terminator thing. So that was pretty cool. Maybe I'll post maybe I'll post pictures of those in the in the blog. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Well, I mean, appreciate you coming on and, and chatting again. Uh, obviously, if, after a busy week and a depressing time with Kentucky. <laughs> uh, always next year. There's always next year. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll chat more next week. Uh, but, uh, for now, have a good one. All right. Thanks, Mitchell. See y'all.